Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Barbara. Welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. Today I'm going to give you the May tour of the High Tunnel um, and show you what's going on in there. And I think I've pretty much decided that for the garden tours going forward for the summertime, I'm going to do three, um, two or three separate garden tours because I think it's too much to put in one video and I don't think anybody wants to sit there for an hour. So I'm going to do the raised bed, um, the High Tunnel um, garden update and then I will do a garden update and then the um, stuff behind the house. I may combine the stuff behind the house with the high tunnel sometimes, but so you'll definitely get two updates per month, one for each, if not three, okay? I think that's the best way to do it. So I'm at the high tunnel. We're gonna go in. I wanna show you what's going on. We're at the um, almost the last week of May. So um, we're just getting started into the summer. It's not quite summer yet, but um, I wanna show you a couple of things that's going on as well as show you some areas that are gonna be transitioning and we're still gonna plant more stuff, okay? So let's go. Here's my seat starting table still um, here. We haven't moved it to its permanent spot yet. It's actually coming in right handy um, being here as soon as I walk in um, because I can um, start my seeds here. But these are all the plants that I had in the back of the greenhouse. That's um, oregano, that's marjoram, that is mint. No, I'm sorry, that's lemon balm. That is um, mint, this is spearmint. That's more oregano, that's my lime tree, that's my lemon tree. Um, and then in the back, back there, that's dill. And then what you see here, I'm doing an experiment. I just gave these guys some water, but these four here, um, are tomato tomato cuttings. So I prune my tomatoes um, and I'm rooting these to see if they're going to grow. Um, and then I have some dahlias that I am um, that I potted up to get started um, to root. And then once they do, I'll put them in the ground. Uh, one of the things about dahlias, I'm growing those new this year. One of the things about um, dahlias um, that I'm learning or that I've read is that they can easily rot. So when you first put them in the ground, you give them water like that first time, but you don't water them again until they sprout. And um, if they get too much water, they can easily rot. So I had them in the garden, but of course I, I'm watering there every day and it's on a sprinkler system. So I can't determine that it won't get any water. So I took them out um, and I'm going to try to pot them up in here and let them sprout and then I'll put them back out there. So that's what I'm doing with that. Okay, so in this bucket here are some sweet potato slips I put in. One side is doing great, other side not so great. Not sure why, not gonna worry about it. Over there, there's my eucalyptus. I got a big roll of landscape fabric so I can't get closer without me stepping all over it. So that's the eucalyptus, it's going well. And then here is bed number one. So this bed was full of lettuce. Um, as you can see, it has thinned out some. I've already taken probably one two three four out because they bolted um last week was really 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 hot here um and so it definitely got hot in the high tunnel <clears throat> i still have a few um yet hanging on that have not bolted but i imagine that um within the next couple of weeks those will be done and so this will be a, a bed that i'll have left um i have some purple basil here and then i've started putting in some peppers and so this bed will be one of the beds that will transition because I haven't found any lettuces that really survive in my zone in the summer. And I'm in zone 7A. So if you know of any lettuces that do well, <clears throat> like above 90 degrees, let me know. Um, so yeah, so this bed will be transitioning. Um, and I think I'm going to put peppers here is what I'm thinking. So that's another reason why I'm starting seeds is because I know I'll have this bed being empty very soon. So this right here is a bed full of flowers. You guys know I'm trying my hand at cut flowers this year for the first time. And so in this bed, of course, tall in the back are sunflowers. And these are pro-cut sunflowers, which means they're only going to produce a single stem for cut flowers. Um, you don't want the big, tall, branching ones um, because um, they'll get too big. So I think this is, this is the height it's going to go and it's starting to form there. So this right here is starting to bloom, which is pretty. Y'all forgive the weeds. I gotta get that under control. Um, so that's Gumfrina. And then the Celosia is starting to bloom as well. Isn't that pretty? 
so pretty. But I have a mix of flowers in here. Let me take you on the other side so you can see the gumfrina and close. So you can see that that's starting to bloom. So I have a few different flowers um, in here. Okay, so then bed number three, this is where I had spinach. The spinach bolted. Um, it was in that open area right there. Um, so that's, um, I put some peppers in there that are really um, small that I started from seed. I'm gonna see if they're gonna grow. This is broccoli that I got from my friend. Um, it is taking off looking good. Hopefully I'll have broccoli before it gets too hot. Those are some zinnia flowers up there. Here's another broccoli. It looks good. So far, so good. And then these are other peppers that I did from seed. These two are broccoli here. It was turning way more yellow. I put some fertilizer on it and so it's gotten better. Um, there's a couple of brown spots there. Um, oh, do I have an nasturtium bloom? Y'all look, can you see that? Notice that. It's a bloom, a nasturtium bloom. Y'all, I don't know why it's yellow on my nasturtium. I started this from seed and I almost was gonna get rid of this because I'm like, it's not growing, but I have one little bloom. Y'all, I'm so excited. Okay, so y'all tell me, do, I've been gardening for two years and I get still excited every time I see a bloom or something that I didn't think was gonna make it or the first bloom of something, I still get excited. Does that ever go away? I don't think so. Maybe it does. I'm just two years in, but I love it. Okay, so let's go to the other side here. These are the onions. Y'all, these onions are not doing good, and I don't know why. So if you saw my garden tour that I did behind the house in my raised beds, I have onions from the same company there. There are red onions behind my house. These are candy onions, and y'all, they just are not doing well. If, if you look at my other video, I'm sorry, there's a bird in here. <laughs> if you look at my other video, you'll see that the stalks are much bigger. Um, if you didn't know, like every one of these represents a ring. These are tiny compared to those, and I planted these like maybe a few days before. I'm not sure what's going on. I fertilized, I've done all the things, but yeah, not sure what's happening there. Okay, y'all, this is the bed of the Yukon Gold Potatoes. It has gone bananas. You can see the leaves are starting to turn yellow. They're falling down. I have flowers. This is my first time doing Yukon Gold Potatoes. And what I have read is that you'll know they're ready when they start to fall down, get flowers and turn yellow. So it has an 85 to 90 day maturity. And so based on when I planted these, they should be ready like June 5th, um, between June 5th and 10th. So I'm gonna give it a couple of more weeks because it just started getting yellow right there. And I just started getting flowers. So. I'm gonna let them hang out and I have stopped watering them. Um, I think that's one of the mistakes I made with my sweet potatoes last year is that I watered up until the time I harvest. And again, I read, researched <laughs> that um, you're supposed to stop watering once it gets to this point because they don't really need any water. They're, they're done growing. Now what's going on down there? I don't know, but I'm gonna wait the two more weeks of the maturity date before I touch them. So if you're new to my channel, you, you keep hearing me say I've read, I've researched because I am a new gardener, y'all. So I've been doing this two years um, and enjoying the process. Um, and I say that gardening is a journey. And so I do read a lot. I research a lot. I read books. I read articles. I watch other people's YouTubes. I go to four or five different sources. Like I do all of that um, to learn, right? Um, and so I encourage you to do the same. Um, and so... I know a little something in two years. And again, the best practice is just to do it, right? I've never done Yukon Gold Potatoes. We'll see how it works out. If it does, great, I'll get better. If it doesn't, great, I'll get better, right? So I encourage you to have that same mindset as well. So this is the last raised bed here. Well, let's start with the star, which is the cabbage. Cabbage is looking fantastic. Um, I want the head to get bigger. But if it gets too hot in here, I may have to go ahead and pull it because I don't want it to split. Um, so yeah, so that we can at least eat it. These are sweet potato slips. Y'all, it started off rocky. And again, you can see they all started off kind of like this. That one. 
and now this side has leaves and doing better this side not so much and i'm trying to find me some more sweet potato slips before it gets too late and i have not been able to find any so yeah not looking great on that so more to come okay so over here these are flowers as you can see they're taking bloom y'all i just love this dusty miller it just presents such a contrast and i just love it i don't know why but i just think it's so pretty does anybody else grow dusty miller let me know oh and then i see a flower starting to bud there this is Ch china aster so that's also another cut flower i have some, some more celosia and zinnia zinnias in here so that's that and then on the other side are the herbs so i have another dusty miller there y'all i just love this it is so pretty to me i need to take a picture of that and make it my screensaver and then my sage is doing really, really well. I did that from seed. My basil. Then this is Thai basil. Y'all, I've never successfully grown Thai basil, so this is good. I'm having a lot of first successes, which is awesome. Um, what I don't know, does this mean that it's not good because it's bolted and it has a flower? I'm not sure. I don't even know how to use this. I'm assuming I take the leaves and just put it in my cooking. That's rosemary. Y'all let me know on, on the Thai basil. Who's a Thai basil expert? Let me know. Okay. So let's go over here. Y'all excuse these weeds are taken over because I use this cheap black paper. I've already had a, a video talking about that. Um, the places where I have the good paper didn't happen. But here is cabbage. I'm going to run quickly. So this whole aisle is pretty much cabbage. I run quickly through that. So far, so good. Hopefully, that's where the Swiss chart was. Um, it's gone. We harvested it and then it bolted. So we're done with that. That's a pepper starting to form there. My first true flower of the season. That's a zinnia. <clears throat> so more cabbage. More cabbage. Um over here this is the and this is all cabbage that i did from seed um this spring but this cabbage here has been in here for a while and just starting to percolate so again i think i'm going to take these out this week because i don't know i don't want to risk them splitting because it gets too hot in here so i think i'm gonna take them out and then maybe i can put all three together and that'll be enough for a meal um so yeah this is all cabbage all cabbage all cabbage is a dahlia that has sprouted up that's growing and this is going to be amber queen which is like it's like a peach color <clears throat> now let me show you this somebody has come in and destroyed my greens this happened in the last week or so which it was really hot in here and i was so afraid that they were going to bolt which some of them bolted but most of them did not but i have severe pest damage severe I hate that. I'm not going to be too overly upset about it because this is the end of the life of the greens. Because, again, it's about to be too hot anyway. <clears throat> but you can see that this is the green. I harvested some on Friday, and I still have more to harvest. And look, it only got, like, the ones in the back of the hot tunnel. I mean, they tore this up. Somebody, somebody's really and maybe that's the maybe that's the i don't even know what it is anyway they tore it up but then all of those up there as you can see look fairly good so this is um a black eyed susan that i did from seed it is growing quite nice um basil here is a tomato row I'll let you see that and let me step over here. And then this row here are all black eyed peas. We're gonna put, finish the trellis up here for the black eyed peas. So that's that. And then this whole row is tomatoes that we still have to finish trellising. Remember I told you so much to be done. You can see that some tomatoes are looking good. They're getting big. 
for sure. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you can see I have one tomato here. You can kind of see it peeking through there. There's one tomato there. Okay, so this is the row that I'm tackling next. So this is where all the kale and the collard greens are. More pests have gotten the kale. Um, so I'm gonna pull all of this out and we're gonna plant black eyed peas. We had black eyed peas here last summer. I know that you're supposed to rotate and so I'm assuming that since I've had something else in this spot that that counts as rotation. Y'all let me know. So black eyed peas were here this summer. The kale and collard greens were here in the fall and winter. And now I'm gonna put black eyed peas again. Let me know if that works. If not, then I'll probably do green beans, but I'm curious to see if that works. So somebody put down in the comments and let me know all you garden experts. So this whole row is gonna come out. Um, I'm gonna harvest what I can, compost what I cannot, um, and we'll go from there. Okay. I know it's not a garden tour, but I at least just wanted to give you a view of the garden while it's being watered. Oh, isn't it so pretty? And y'all, I did get all my stuff planted. So I did get all my stuff planted. I did a video yesterday and I was talking about just getting all the things done and being able to get the whole garden planted. I ended up getting my watermelon and cantaloupe planted on the last row. So pretty much everything is planted except one section of the fourth row. And I just don't know if I'm gonna plant it yet what I'm gonna plant. And so to me, it's done because I haven't made a decision, right? And I could just leave it like that and be done, but something in me is like, don't you don't don't leave wasted. I mean, don't leave space, right? Take up every available space. So I'm just not sure what I wanna put there yet. But other than that, everything in the garden is planted, finally, yes. So I'm glad about that. We got the watermelon and the cantaloupe in on that last row. I didn't show you footage of that, but it is in. So definitely we'll have progress hopefully on the next garden tour for the garden. So anyway, y'all, that's the um, that's the high tunnel update. That is the update of what's going on. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you like what you're seeing. And remember y'all, gardening is a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time.